friends, welcome to worship for Sunday, February 12th, 2023, the sixth Sunday of Epiphany. Today is the last Sunday of this in-between season of Epiphany, holding space between Christmas and Lent. Next week, we'll observe Transfiguration Sunday, and then Ash Wednesday will begin Lent on Wednesday, February 22nd. As the days outside lengthen and the prospect of spring comes, we'll turn our hearts and minds to that season of prayer and preparation, thinking about what the miracle of Jesus' resurrection means for us this particular year as the people and communities we are in this moment. For our Lenten devotionals this year, I have found a resource for us from the SALT project called Into the Wild. It uses the work of artist Henri Matisse, born 1869 and died 1954, to help us think about different themes for Lent and our connection to the wilderness of creation. Copies of the booklet will be available for every household in print or electronically, and we'll be using them during our weekly Wednesday evening soup and worship gatherings at Black Creek. They begin on Ash Wednesday, so look for booklets next week in email and print at all three of our parish churches. I also have some important sabbatical news to share. As you know from reading the newsletters, I'll be away for six weeks at the end of June and all of July this year, and an additional four weeks at the end of December and January of next This is rest, study, and renewal so that I can continue to enthusiastically serve our parish for many years to come. It's not vacation, but more of an extended time of study leave. I'll be attending the UCC's General Synod in Indianapolis, spending a lot of time reading and writing about how to sustain long-term and shared rural ministry, and taking a few trips as well, hopefully in January to Massachusetts by train. At their annual meeting at the the not to have any worship physically at Cecil during the weeks of sabbatical. They'll be sending out letters to all the members and friends with lots more information, but during this time they'll be joining in worship at Trinity and Black Creek and using our video worship resources, which will continue during the sabbatical time. For worship at Trinity and Black Creek, we are working with a member in discernment, MID they're called, Mark Schmidt, for worship coverage during sabbatical, both June, July, and December, January. An MID is someone who is studying to be an ordained pastor in the UCC. I mentor Mark as part of my work with the association's placement and transition team, and I am excited about this opportunity we can offer Mark for an experience of consecutive weeks of leading worship plus a place to receive constructive feedback and love. So stay tuned for much more information as the months go on. News of the world is, of course, of the horribly destructive earthquake in Turkey and Syria. More than 6,000 people are confirmed dead, and several cities are completely reduced to ruins. Getting aid to these communities is a complicated process because of the terrain and the weather, where winter has come bringing snows and falling temperatures that hamper relief efforts. Many of those most directly affected by the earthquake were Syrian refugees who, having fled the decade-long war in their homeland, were living in makeshift camps and housing, trying to find a better future for themselves and their families. Aid and relief will be needed for many months, if not years, to come. The United Church of Christ has issued an appeal, and I will include information about that in next, week, next week's materials, as well as the March newsletter. I know it's tempting to rush financial gifts to the affected area immediately, but I also want to make sure our gifts get to the people most in need. Other organizations, such as the Red Crescent, which is the Islamic version of the Red Cross, and the United Nations Refugee Agency, UNHCR, are on the ground working during this initial rescue and recovery phase. Us waiting to send funds will provide for the longer term needs of rebuilding and restoring communities. In other news, the war in Ukraine will be a year old this coming week, and Russia is threatening to use nuclear powered missiles as they intensify their assault of Ukraine. The United Nations is calling on the international community to intervene in Haiti, which is without an elected government and dealing with extreme gang violence, poverty, and famine. Protests for justice and freedom continue in Iran and Peru, while famine continues to affect large parts of Africa. Flooding continues in Australia and New Zealand, 
and rising prices and instability with utilities affect nearly every part of the world. Closer to home, it was the week of the President's State of the Union address which brought to light, again, the political bitterness, disrespect, and division of our elected leaders. And a Milwaukee police officer was killed in the line of duty. Plus, we're dealing with inflation, stagnant wages, and general frustration and fear about life in this world. But this coming week, my beloved Red Sox and the rest of Major League Baseball will report for spring training. And there's an important episode of football on this weekend. Without our Packers in the game, we're free to just enjoy the snacks, the commercials, and root for whichever team we think looks cutest in their uniforms, or in my case, probably Philadelphia, since I have lots of friends who live near Philly. And in other reasons to hold on to hope, you are here. Reading this or listening to me, and our parish is a strong and faithful place where people gather in many different ways to live out our faith in Jesus. No, we don't get it right all of the time. That would be far too much to expect. But together we're trying to create a community of love and hope modeled on the way Jesus lived during his lifetime, opening ourselves to the Spirit's leading. We aren't and never will be the biggest churches and the most important ones in the eyes of the world, but in God's eyes, we are doing exactly what we need to be doing, where we are, with the talents and resources we have. We are loving and caring for one another, serving God in our communities, and being the hands, feet, brains, and heart of God in this world with all we say and do. Again, one of the reasons to hold on to hope is you. In parish prayers this week, excuse me, it's that cold time of the year just a little in and out temperature changes. As I was saying in parish prayers this week, please continue to keep our beauty Schneider from Cecil in your heart and mind. She had a heart procedure this last week and we'll meet with her doctors this coming week to discuss what the next steps are in all things. Please remember that we are in this together, designed and created by God to support each other through this life. Reach out, lean on me and each other, and together we can meet whatever lies ahead getting to where God needs us to be. And now, I invite you to bring yourself to a spirit of worship. Let us pray. Happy are those who walk in God's ways. Blessed are those who follow God's commands. Faithful are those who work for justice. Joyful are those whose hearts are filled with praise. Our first hymn, God Reigns O'er All the Earth, is a celebration of God's presence in all creation and throughout all time. Oh 
Together, let us pray, remembering the Spirit's presence with us always. Gracious God, guide us during this time together. Keep our eyes and hearts focused on you. Help us to be faithful to all that you want for us and for the world. Inspire us that we might seek you with all of who we are, body, mind, and spirit. Remind us of your presence with us and fill our days with your unending grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And joining our hearts and minds together with Christians around the world and throughout time, we trust in God's promise to hear us, the joy and struggle of our hearts and minds, and in the power of prayer to encourage us in the life of faith. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we come in gratitude for all the blessings of our lives. We thank you for friends and family, for community in our parish, for all the ways you provide for and connect us one to another. Remind us that you are with us always, in all that life brings. Help us to see the goodness, kindness, compassion, connection, and hope that surround us every day. Keep us ever aware of the connections that tie us together as your people and your beloved creation. Inspire us that we might see your presence in the faces of our friends, our family, strangers, those we believe are our enemies, and in our own faces. Help us believe that there is no one you do not love, and guide us that we might live from that belief, showing and sharing your love with all. We give thanks for our congregation and our parish and all the ways you bring us together to learn and grow as your people. Inspire us that we might walk more fully and faithfully in the path that Jesus showed us that we might widen the welcome, excuse me, widen the welcome and share your love with all we say and do. We pray for those who stand in harm's way in our name, soldiers, sailors, firefighters, police officers, and first responders. Keep them safe as they do their work. We pray for all who provide for us, all that we depend on, and those whose work is so often unseen and taken for granted. Help us to be truly grateful for them, and to share our gratitude more clearly. We pray for all who work in health care in any way and pray they might have the courage they need for the days ahead as they deal with the challenges of our own and our collective health. We pray for students, teachers, staff, aides, and families. Guide and inspire them and give them the strength they need. We pray for those in government entrusted with the sacred responsibility of leading our communities and the world. We pray particularly those in government in the United States might help us find a way forward that works to end all that divides us. Guide their hearts and minds on the path to peace for us and for all creation. We pray for those who are seeking places to live in safety and hope. Be with those who are resettling here in the United States as refugees. Remind us that almost all of our ancestors came to this place as refugees or immigrants. We pray for those who are struggling in body, mind, and spirit. May your grace come to all in need, particularly those recovering from hospitalization and surgery, particularly for our Buddhist Schneider as she waits for a consultation with her doctor. Those dealing with the challenges of cancer, those dealing with addiction in its many forms, those with mental health concerns, those who are imprisoned, those dealing with isolation, fear, and worry about this time in their lives and in the life of the world. Be with us all. Excuse me. Be with us all and fill us with your loving kindness. We pray for those who are grieving, 
whether the loss is new or many years old, and all those whose hearts ache for someone they love. We pray for those whose private grief has become public. Bring us comfort and help us to trust in your promise through Jesus of life everlasting. We pray for the places around this world living under the shadow of war, violence, disease, disaster, famine, and so much more. We pray for our country, O oh God. In the short days of this new year, there has been so much gun violence, so much tearing apart of communities and lives. We pray for an end to this senseless destruction. We pray for a way forward that rids us of this epidemic, providing love and support for those who have been most directly affected, and a path forward in legal and community circles to create a safer future for all. We pray. Excuse me. We pray with heavy and broken hearts for all those affected by the terrible earthquake in Turkey and Syria. We pray for the rescue workers who continue to sift through rubble, for those who are waiting for word of their loved ones, for the doctors and nurses and all who tend to the injured, for those who are working to respectfully care for the dead, and for all who wonder what will happen next, seeing the destruction and wondering how they might ever rebuild. We pray for Ukraine, for Peru and Brazil, for Iran, Haiti and Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh, for Chad, Syria, and Yemen, for Tigre, Burkina Faso, and Colombia, for Argentina and Afghanistan, for South Sudan, Ethiopia, and the Horn of Africa, for the Uyghur people and the Rohingya people, for China, Palestine, and Israel, and for all the places in need of your healing love. We pray for the people dealing with extreme weather, including flooding, wildfires, droughts, famine, and destructive storms, and for every place, O oh God, where your people are struggling. We pray for those who are helping communities affected by these extremes, bringing aid and companionship. We pray for our collective will to do all we can to help heal our planet. From the depths of who we are, we pray for your peace to come to all of this world you love so very much. Be with the families of the missing and murdered indigenous people across the country. Be with those who are victims of violence, sexism, racism, and the interconnected isms that cause hatred and discrimination. Help us to be honest about our shared history, particularly the history of slavery, residential schools, and sexism. Be with our country as we face the challenges of living together, all of us with different thoughts and experiences. Guide us that we might work with you to create a new world, a way forward that honors the dignity of all people, that recognizes your presence in all people and all creation. Remind us how much we need you and each other. Remind us that our faith is not just for us, but is your call in our lives to reach out to those in need with our words and our actions, that your kingdom might come in its fullness. Help us hold on to the peace that you give, a peace this world cannot provide and cannot take away. Renew our hope, strengthen our faith, deepen our patience and inspire our hearts, O oh God, give us all we need for whatever lies ahead. And together in hope, we pray the words that Jesus would teach his first disciples saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we come to a time of confession knowing that we need God's love to fill our lives and trusting in God's grace that will receive us and bring us to new life. Let us pray. God of forgiveness and mercy, we come to you in confession. You call us to walk in your ways, to love others as you love us. Sometimes we turn away, letting our hearts and minds fill with hatred. You invite us to be part of your community of blessing and hope. Sometimes we give in to selfishness and jealousy. You invite us to faith and courage in this world. 
Sometimes we let despair and worry overwhelm us. Forgive us and draw us back to you. Fill us with your love that we might love others. Fill us with your grace that we might do our part to build up your kingdom. Fill us with hope that we might trust in you today and always. Amen. And now in this time of silence, we bring our own personal concerns and needs to God's forgiving love. Hear the good news. God loves you. God is with you today and always offering you forgiveness, grace, and hope. Thanks be to God. Our first scripture reading is the beginning of the longest psalm in the scriptures, number 119. In the original Hebrew, the psalm is an acrostic. Each stanza or section begins with one of the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. The entire psalm is a celebration of faithfulness to God's commandments and God's goodness towards all creation. Reading from Psalm 119, verses 1 through 8, adapted from the New Revised Standard Version. Happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are those who keep God's decrees, who seek God with their whole heart, who also do no wrong but walk in God's ways. You have commanded your laws to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. I will observe your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Our next hymn, Be Now My Vision, is an ancient Irish hymn from sometime in the 8th century that reminds us with God we have all we need in this life and into eternity. Continue readings in Matthew's Gospel in the Sermon on the Mount. Here Jesus continues talking about the laws that came before and how they should be lived out in the present moment. Reading from Matthew chapter 5 verses 21 through 26 and 43 through 48, adapted from the New Revised Standard Version. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, 
and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with them, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your God in heaven. For God makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even tax collectors do the same? If you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly God is perfect. May God add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the living of these scriptures. For the third week, we find Jesus sitting on a mountain near the Sea of Galilee. He's gathered his disciples near him, those simple fishermen he's called to follow him. They in this growing crowd that follow Jesus everywhere, they are waiting to see what he will do and say. They've been hanging on his every word. Some of them have heard him before preaching and teaching about the love of God and the abundance of God's kingdom that is for all with no exceptions. And some of them have seen what he can do, heal the sick and the blind and the lame and the deaf. And all that was in these small villages and towns near the sea. But now they're all together for Jesus's first big public teaching. It takes three of Matthew's chapters for Jesus to teach the disciples and the crowd everything he wants them to know here at the beginning of his ministry. He started with the Beatitudes, those inside out, upside down blessings that require the faithful to turn from the ways of this world to the path that God chooses, the side of the hurting and the hungry and the oppressed. Then Jesus moved on to describe the people as salt of the earth and light of the world, bringing the hope of God's promises to everything they do in word and action. And now we find Jesus continuing with what he started last week. How does he, Jesus, relate to the laws, those commandments and instructions that came from God before him? In a speaking format common in his day, Jesus says, You have heard it is said that, but I say to you this. So we have teachings about how we relate to one another. The law says not to murder, but Jesus says more than that. Don't keep grudges against each other. Work towards reconciling with them. Don't be quick to insult one another or you'll be liable for judgment. And in the part of the scripture we didn't read today, Jesus will say very similar things about adultery and divorce and swearing oaths or testifying against others and seeking retaliation and vengeance. And then we get to some of the most challenging of all of Jesus' teachings, not just in the Sermon on the Mount, but in anything he will teach, anything he will ask of those who will follow him. Jesus says, we have heard that we are supposed to love our neighbors and hate our enemies, but he asks us to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. If we want to be faithful to the God who created us, we have to understand, Jesus says, that it rains, the rains, they fall on the good and the bad, meaning God's grace comes to all, not just to the people we like and who like us. It's not enough. Jesus says, to do what tax collectors and sinners and people who don't know God do, we have to do more to go and be perfect, just as God in heaven is perfect. No pressure, right? It's not enough that we have to be, according to the Beatitudes, humble and poor and merciful and persecuted for doing God's work in the world. It's not enough that we have to be salt and light, sharing our gifts without drawing attention to ourselves and at the same time celebrating the gifts that God has given to us and only us. And it's not enough that we have to go above and beyond the standards of society, not just loving God and neighbor and ourself, but we have to love our enemies and those who seek to do us harm. And now we have to be perfect too. I remember 
watching gymnast Mary Lou Retton vault performance during the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles. Even with a knee injury that should have sidelined her, she ran down the path towards the vault and performed a miracle, scoring perfect tens from every judge. And I know what a perfect game is in baseball, 27 up, 27 down, nine innings of a pitcher having no one hit anything that lets them get on base. And in 140 years of baseball, I looked it up, there have only been 23 perfect games. That's the thing about perfection is it's really rare. It just doesn't come along all that often. We have a lot of good and amazing and incredible, but not a lot of perfect. And yet here is Jesus saying that if we want to follow him, if we want to be his disciples, we're supposed to be perfect, just like God in heaven is perfect. Is there anyone listening to me right now who believes they've already achieved this, that they are perfect and without flaw, because if there is, I would really like to talk to you about how you got that way and how you stay that way in the world we're living in. None of us, or ever will be, that didn't come out right, none of us are, or ever will be perfect. It's just not possible for human beings. At least humans who have to interact with others, who have to live in the world surrounded by other wonderfully imperfect people. And the good news I have for you is that I don't think the scripture we heard today is asking for it either. Whew. So if it doesn't mean actual perfection, what is this scripture about? What is it that Jesus is asking us to strive for, to do in and with our lives? And in order to understand that, we have to learn a little bit of Greek. The word that we have translated as perfect is teleos. Teleos. It can mean perfect, but that's not how it's usually used. It's much more of an idea of being whole or maybe mature or honest. Perfection, at least in this teaching from Jesus, isn't about scoring perfect tens in everything we do in this life or getting through our days without ever making a mistake because, frankly, God and Jesus both know that's not ever going to happen for any of us. That kind of perfection is beyond us. But the wholeness and maturity of teleos isn't. That's something entirely within our grasp. This asks us to try in this life to live up to all that Jesus calls us to, all that God wants for us and for the world. We keep the idea, the dream of the work of the kingdom in front of us at all times. We hold the standards Jesus set before us, striving as best we can from day to day with all the challenges and triumphs we have to live into things like loving our enemies and praying for those who persecute us and always taking the side of the oppressed and the deliberately silenced, working for justice and peace with our words and our actions. We hold Jesus' actions as the model for our own lives, trying to live the way he lived and love the way he loved. We keep our eyes on the perfection of Jesus' example, knowing that because we are human, we will fall short of the goal. And what do we do when we aren't who we hoped we would be? when we don't stand up against injustice and we don't share our goods and resources, our time and our talents, when we have misplaced anger against someone and we don't use our words to lift others up, when that happens, teleos, that kind of perfection, asks us to be honest, to admit our mistakes, to acknowledge what has happened and how we might do better next time. There's an idea in Zen Buddhism that sums it up the practice of perfection. We work on it every day, knowing who we were created by, to be, who God dreams of us becoming, who we want in the depths of our souls to be. We work on it knowing that we will fail and fall short, knowing that we're going to make mistakes, lots and lots of them if we're honest about it, and that we'll dust ourselves off and focus our eyes again on the goal, on the image of Jesus as perfecter of our faith, and try again. One of the things about this practice of perfection, this growing towards being who God created us to be, to wanting to be people who follow in Jesus' footsteps as closely as we possibly can, 
One of the things that is absolutely essential to doing it, to even trying, is having a community of people who surround us that support our efforts. Think about it. If you're trying to practice perfection, to be that kind of whole and complete that God and Jesus are, and you're human, and you make a mistake or six, and you're surrounded by people who judge you or condemn you or never let you forget that mistake, bringing it up time and time again, after a while, you're not going to want to even try to be perfect as God is perfect. But if you're surrounded by a community of people who are all trying to do the same, who are all in their beautiful imperfection working towards the goal of having the same mind and heart as Jesus, then when we inevitably fall short and make mistakes, we're surrounded by people who receive us in grace and mercy, in forgiveness and love, who urge us to try again and to be better the next time. So I would invite you, my friends, to join me in the practice of perfection, of bringing all of who we are, all of our beautifully and perfectly imperfect selves to the work of Telios, Let's try to live each day with the intention of following Jesus, of trying to look at the world the way he did, to live in it with the gentle firmness of God's incredible love that seeks out the lost and speaks up for the voiceless and works toward creating one giant table for all of creation to sit at. Let's love the way Jesus did, with open hearts and open minds, seeing in each and every person, including ourselves, someone God created in their very own image, someone God loves unconditionally, and seeking ways for all of those people, for all creation to know peace and abundance. And let's live knowing we will fall short of these goals, that we will never be perfect as God is, as Jesus is, but that together, loving and supporting one another, we can create communities where Thelios, wholeness, hope, honesty, and mutual love and support lead us every day closer and closer to the goal. Amen. And now, having worshiped together, let us pray in thanksgiving for the blessings of our lives. God of all blessings, we thank you for this time together as your people. We pray that the gifts we bring and the lives we live might help others see the goodness of your grace and love. We pray your blessing on every person gathered here in person and in spirit, that our community might be strong and faithful. Guide and inspire us as we live into this week, that through us and through our parish, your kingdom might come in its fullness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our last hymn, Go My Children with My Blessing, is a reminder that wherever we go, we are surrounded by the goodness of God's love and grace.
And now, my friends, receive this benediction. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus, and the presence of the Spirit bring you courage and peace this day and for whatever lies ahead. Amen.